Welcome to another episode of A Feminine Moment. I'm Cherry Lynn, and I'm joined with Dixie Andalyn Forsythe. Hi, Dixie. Hi, Cherry. Uh, Dixie is the author of Fascinating Womanhood for the Timeless Woman, and we're here today to talk about when your family criticizes your husband. We, we had a, a message today, actually, about this. Dixie, do you want to share a little bit about the story of the... Of the yeah, woman? from what little I know about it, because it was kind of a text message thing, and it wasn't real detailed, but... It was a situation where a woman um, and her husband, um, the husband is not getting along with the wife's sister, and they're constantly kind of fighting, and she's saying terrible things about the husband, and he's getting more and more upset. What should she do? Because she said that she lives in um, Cameroon, which is in Africa, and <laughs> she said there's a saying in Africa that, uh, how did she put it? Something like, Marriages can end, but families are forever. It doesn't seem like it was exactly, but that was the essence of it. And I told her that that's just wrong. When Because, you know, at first I thought, what is going on? Is somebody, is one or the other a bad person? And, and, and that sort of thing. So when if you have a problem with somebody in your family, and it could be in-laws, sometimes it's real common for one or the other, for maybe your your parents don't really like your husband or approve of something, or maybe they don't think he's making enough money, or, <coughs> or that you, the most common thing is that they think their daughter married beneath herself. Yeah, because actually in some, sometimes no one is good enough for you, you know, so in, in a way, they, they wouldn't say that, but there's that feeling that I pictured my child marrying somebody like this, and that isn't what i they married somebody I didn't picture. So whether it's an in-law situation or in this case, a sister and her husband, the question is how, and you're, and you're like in the, it's like a sandwich and you're the bologna in the middle. What do you do with, with FW? I know what it feels like to have my in-law criticize me to my husband. And the way he handled that was so perfect because Bob was kind of a favorite and oldest child and when when he married me his mother who's a wonderful person she she really was she was a wonderful person she's passed away but she was kind of threatened um by me because i was um from far away bob grew up in canada and i was from southern california and i think she pictured that to be somehow cooler <laughs> which is just it's just a different place. Anyway, so, <clears throat> and my mother had written a best-selling book, so it was a little hard for her. And um, so she was a little, she was a little hard on me to him, not to my face. And he, this was the first uh, summer we were married, <clears throat> and he just told her, she's number one. And if you criticize her, you criticize me, I'm not going to put up with any of it. And he was close to her. And she took it and it was, it set the boundary for the rest of our marriage. And it was wonderful. So if you're having this problem where someone's criticizing your husband, what do you do? Because she, she wants a relationship with her sister or you want a relationship with your mother. What do you do? If your husband is basically a good man, we're not saying that you, your family found out he just robbed the bank and, and you got to stick up for him. You know, we're not talking about stuff like that. But if he's basically a good man, you need, to, you need to be your husband's, even though you see him doing, like say he, <clears throat> he yells at somebody. What I would suggest you do is seek to understand your husband. Why is he upset? What, what has happened? The more you understand a person on either side, but the more you understand a person, the more you can empathize with how they might be feeling. But always be your husband's number one loyal supporter because if you don't, you can lose your marriage. And that, that saying in Africa, wherever that part of Africa, that she heard that, your, I told her your husband is the father of your children. He is family. And she liked that because to say your husband isn't your family, that's putting your marriage, which is so important, to father your children your whole life, is saying that these these people over here well, you don't choose to inherit your family, and they may be wonderful people. They may have all kinds of issues. You just don't know. But your husband, you pick. 
except in rare circumstances, some people are in arranged marriages, but usually you pick your husband. And so if he's basically a good guy, you need to be his number one fan. And I can say for myself, from personal experience, how it made me feel when Bob stuck up for me and said I was number one for him. Because if he had, if he had gone in the, in the other room and whispered about me to his mom, that could have, that would have been seriously damaging. Now, what do you, what's your advice as far as being a peacemaker though? I know you said that, you know, you mm -hmm. so as the woman in this scenario are the, the sand in the middle of the sandwich. Well, how do you make peace out of it though? What, that, thank you for asking that because in this situation with the sister, I would say she also goes to her sister and tries to understand her. Um, and the sister's husband may be the one that has stirred this up. You don't know. But the more you can understand other people, and, and you may understand, but you've got to realize right out of the starting gate that you cannot change either person. If your husband, you feel like he's being unreasonable with, or your parents are being unreasonable with you or whatever, realize, okay, I'm not going to change these people, but I can keep boundaries, meaning that you can say, um, like, my, like Bob did, he said, this is number one for me, and I don't like you doing this I'm not I'm not okay with it so what his mother did was she stopped criticizing me to him because now, she knew what, what but, if go ahead what if Bob had not done that I don't know that a lot of men would go to their moms and say that um and that helped me if he hadn't it would have really been hard yeah if he just said yeah you're right that really drives me nuts or whatever that would have been hard but in the case of this this woman or, or say anyone out there who has a problem with in-laws or whatever, what do you do? If it was an in-law situation where, and I could feel that my mother-in-law was uncomfortable. She was threatened. I, what I, all I could do was to try to be really kind to her and try to um, be the best person I knew how to be. I tried to help her when we were up there visiting. I tried to be supportive. And I may not have ever gotten to be as close to her as I wished I could, mm -hmm. but I certainly could avoid unpleasant situations where I say maybe resented her for not accepting me as much as I had hoped or whatever. I can, I can avoid things rather than I can try and change her. I couldn't make her feel less threatened. You can't make like this, this girl in the sandwich situation she can't change her sister. She can try to seek to understand why her sister feels that way. Now she finds out her sister feels like, well, well, your husband's standing in the way of me getting something I want that is not appropriate. Right. Then you can think, I don't agree with you. And you can, you may or may not say it depends on your relationship with her that you don't agree with her, but you can, uh, she can also understand that you are empathetic to her feelings because you understand what anxiety feels like you understand what anger feels like even if it's maybe the reasons for her doing it and you may have to face that you may lose a relationship over this you can't always make sure everybody's happy because sometimes in families if they don't like your husband or critical of him or whatever you may have to distance yourself and just think you know what we're not going to we're not going to hang out with these people. We can't because they don't like my husband and, and I don't like um, my husband being criticized to me. If, if anyone criticizes my husband, I am, I'm like the mother bear. That's a good, I think that's a good way of thinking about it though. And, and also remembering too, I think that it's not necessarily going to be like that forever. Um, I that's, have a good that's a good point. Yeah. I have a good friend that went through this when she was engaged and her, uh, fiance's family did not approve of them getting uh, married so young mm -hmm. and she felt so strongly about them getting married and it did cause what you're describing to be kind of a rift yeah and they went <laughs> I think it was about three or four years they went it's not like that they didn't talk mm -hmm. or that they weren't close and they didn't see each other as often and um, now it's been oh gosh I don't even know like maybe 10 years and everything's completely fine so you just it may not be that way forever. 
you may just have to that, that's a very good point because people often do change in time those kind of things are like in the past what upsets you now you may think oh boy was i immature it may completely change but so if you don't burn a bridge with somebody my mother-in-law used to always say don't burn bridges with anyone unless they absolutely insist because you can have friends and this is what she taught me is really valuable you may have friends that are close friends you may have friends that are just sort of hi how are you doing and you're not really close but she said nobody can ever have too many friends so if this person is just a friend you see at the grocery store the checker or something and you can be friends doesn't mean you ever go out to dinner with them or socialize with them you can have all kinds of friends you can have friends that are completely different religions different political beliefs and you can be friends in this narrow area or you can have a close friend that you're friends in a lot of areas and um, but she said don't ever act like oh I don't need that person because they're not just exactly like me yeah no I think this in, in a way applies to probably almost everybody out there I think the biggest thing that stands out to me is to just really put your marriage and relationship first your husband and your family you're gonna be with your them husband family. and your children need to come first for your merit your marriage being most important to you your husband needs to know that you are loyal to him and vice versa and um, you the problem with family is that you can't get rid of them like if this person in this situation that was sent to me if it was somebody that they just knew from work you just say I'm not gonna hang out with them but when it's family you're kind of stuck with them and that you can't just well, you can not see them but you're related to them so there will always be times throughout your life where you'll come in contact with them whereas if I mean, somebody that you know from church or from work you can just think you know you cannot be friends but um, but if it's family you that's why I think she feels like she's kind of caught in a sandwich because her sister is always going to be her sister no matter what she does I even, I even see this in movies when uh, women refer to their their family as their family and their husbands as like that's your family this is my family and it's getting to be rather common to talk that way and I didn't it's really not, think about it until you said that. But yeah. Thank you everyone for watching and don't forget to tune in next Friday when we'll have a new episode and we'll see you then. Bye-bye.